After the brief introduction, today we want to touch upon, as I mentioned, on how drones assist in asset integrity, focusing on the oil and gas sector in particular. So jumping right into it, uh, just to set the scene, I'd like to introduce the two type of drone operations that we utilize. We have the so-called VLOS operations, which refers to visual line of sight. And this is where the pilot or the drone operator always maintains a line of sight with the drone. And we also have beep loss, which are the beyond visual line of sight drones. And in these type of operations, the drone or the aircraft can actually exceed uh, the line of sight of the operator who pilots or operates the drone from a remote area. As a result of those two operation modes, uh, the endurance, the range, the altitude is definitely impacted. So for VLAS operations, the endurance of the drone is much shorter, uh, the range is lower, and the altitude is lower. However, it allows you to focus on a specific area and capture the anomalies that are localized or some defects that are in particular or in certain specified areas of the assets. On the other hand, for VLAS, this is where the drone can actually capture larger areas, scan larger areas in a given time frame. We're using the same uh, same instruments, and uh, within the airspace control area, of course. So these are the primary differences between VLOS and VLOS as two operation modes. When it comes to the applications, and I believe some of those were already mentioned in the panel discussion. Talking about VLOS, we have site surveillance, we have live flare stack inspection. So think about being able to actually inspect the flare, uh, detect anomalies without shutting it down while maintaining a safe distance and operating in a safe manner. We have flow line, pipeline inspection, power lines, solar panels, and this is where the ability of any drone to mount specific sensors and payloads comes very handy. So when we're talking about solar, you can think about using visual or camera drones to detect anomalies like sand accumulation, defects, cracks, broken glass. On, on the same equipment or on the same drone, you could also mount thermal cameras which will be able to reveal anomalies such as hotspots and etc. We also have confined space inspection, and I'll show you more about that. And of course, some other ones such as gas leak detection. Talking about the added value, of course, since you're inspecting large areas or inspecting assets from a remote distance, the human element is at a distance from the asset inspected, we add a safety component. We're able to produce high quality data that is richer than if, it, if the same inspection would otherwise be done using conventional methods. And as a result, of course, the cost goes down and the time needed to inspect an asset goes down significantly as well. So let me show an on -tell. This is actually a live feed from one of our drones that was doing an internal tank inspection. So this is a drone that can go into confined spaces, and this is live footage or actual recorded footage from inside a tank. Uh, the background of this is that we were actually tasked to do a verification after a traditional human inspection was done inside the tank. So what we do using our specialized equipment, we actually flew the drone inside the tank. And as you can see, we could actually spot some of the anomalies that were initially missed. So this is looking at some of the uh, just uh, instances, anomalies that we were able to detect within the tank's vicinity. So this is all within the like, inside the tank. And the pilot is operating it remotely. Just looking, and of course, these drones are equipped with uh, motion detector sensors and barriers such that to avoid collisions and etc. This is one of our other use cases, and here we're looking at gas leak detection. Again, this is using some other specialized sensors, and you can see that the gas leak has been highlighted from wellheads as an example, and you're able to detect it using the payload on the drone. And this is where the visual line of sight operations really shine because in order to detect a leak like the one in that video, you really need to be able to operate the drone within a localized vicinity. Pipelines, very popular, very common. 
This is a top-down approach using one of her other specialized drones. And here in the video or in the image, you can see that we are able to detect and scan large areas of pipeline, long kilometer runs, and notice stuff like sand dune accumulation, um, other anomalies like a foreign object in the vicinity that is not supposed to be there. So the coverage that you can achieve using those remotely piloted systems can be much more than the alternative, which is, as it stands, having someone drive along the pipeline and try to spot things. <coughs> Delving a bit more into pipeline inspections, we want to just highlight one quick use case. Um, so as, as I mentioned, uh, pipeline inspections can be done using aerial photography. And what we're usually looking for are cracks, defects, leaks, and even hot spots in the vicinity or um, along the run of the pipeline. The challenge was uh, the current conditions for this special engagement was the alternative is sending a conventional crew to monitor the pipeline, detect the anomalies. So you can imagine how time consuming, how much effort that takes, and usually the quality of data that such uh, inspectors Retrieve is not very high because they're having to rely on very conventional methods. This is where we came in, and our approach was to use drones equipped with high resolution cameras, allowing us to even detect very granular anomalies, and also coupling that with sensors, such as the PPK sensor, to ensure that the geo accuracy of the data we collect is within a reasonable extent. Because if you cannot locate it effectively, then that could also be a problem. Since this was a VLOS operation, we split uh, the overall approach into two phases. In the first phase, we covered 250 kilometers, around seven days, and we collected more than 1,600 images and were able to spot a little bit more than 102 anomalies. And in the second phase, we took a bit more images, so almost uh, 17,000 images and about 140 anomalies. And in total, we covered 500 kilometers of pipeline between the two phases. Now, the types of anomalies that you're able to detect varies, and the percentage depends on the area and a number of external factors, but you can see in, in the images as an example, uh, number one, say, you know, some waste or some cement on the pipeline, some vegetation, some broken sections, or some foreign objects. And this is, again, a derivative of the type of value that you can get from this drone data because it is so much richer and it gives you a visual snapshot of the asset condition at that time without having to go and visually inspect the asset. The added value, of course, time was saved, so we saved around 51% of the time and we also saved the cost, but most importantly, we also saved, uh, there were a lot of uh, high safety output, so the operators need not go and inspect each section to make sure they're not, uh, they're detecting those anomalies. And the data accuracy, because of coupling it with some specialized technology like PPK, can get up to four centimeters. Of course, some of the next steps, and the panel discussion touched upon this as well, is using AI. Uh, we do use some AI to exceed and accelerate the data processing, but there's always, of course, room to see how they can be employed further, because as I said, you do get a rich set of data, but being able to process it effectively and draw conclusions, that's a very major component as well. Okay, so having talked about VLOS, let's just uh, shed some light on VLOS, and this is again where the operator is actually not maintaining the line of sight with the drone, so they're sitting in a remote, uh, remote aircraft piloting system or in a ground control station, and then the drone can fly for extended regions and extended uh, kilometers. The applications are the same, however, you do introduce applications such as aerial delivery, but the value added with VLOS is that you can run those operations for larger coverage and you can get quicker inspections with less, even less human intervention than its VLOS counterpart. Yep, so this is how a typical VLOS operation in the oil and gas sector would look like. You've got the pilots that are located in a ground control station, and that can be in an office, in a building, etc. And they have a communication network with the drone or with the VLOS drone that can span kilometers. 
hundreds of kilometers view by mounting specialized radios and telecommunication towers. And then that same drone can fly over the areas of interest to make sure it can capture the anomalies in the oil and gas uh, sector. So my, maybe a question would be, what should we use VLOS or VLOS? Again, it depends on the application, the type of anomaly, the localized area and what you're looking for. If we are looking for something very uh, localized, gas leaks, pipeline cracks, then VLOS would be more suited for such applications because you're actually trying to pinpoint something that you need to get reasonably close to and use even high resolution payloads to make sure you're able to meet the deliverables. But on the other hand, if my objective is to scan large areas and find themes or occurrences of anomalies, that could be a, uh, a job better suited for BBLOS because, say, the sand dune accumulation, bird nest uh, on bird nest inspection on power lines, BBLOS allows you to get so much more coverage while being able to detect those anomalies. But it's not always black and white, so we don't have to go for BBLOS or VLOS. The two technologies actually have really good synergy between them. So a typical or a conventional approach would be uh, for drone operations is we would scan an area, maximize coverage using VBLOS, and that allows us to pinpoint specific occurrences of anomalies. If we'd like to investigate that location of interest or that anomaly at a higher level of detail, then this is where we can fall to VLOS and send a specialized crew to really outline what is happening in that specific vicinity. So the two technologies really do have synergy between them, and this is the type of approach that we've been following as well. So this draws me to what we've been doing, and we've been seeing a lot of adoption in using drone technologies to perform different types of asset inspection. So we've done more than 250 live flare inspections, power clients, telecom power inspection, and power line inspections. But we also do aerial survey, and that of course comes hand in hand with the inspection jobs too. So as it stands, we've inspected more than 2,500 assets, covered more than 1,000 kilometers of pipeline, and 1,500 kilometers of power line. And as a result, of course, to get that coverage, we've flown more than uh, 12,580, and the clean data, I mean, as a result of getting such rich data, that, that comes at an expense. So you have to manage big data. And just for selected data sets that can come up to 10 terabytes plus for surveying special areas, and then analyzing data for inspection and anomaly detection for more than 15 terabytes. So that's it, we'll keep it short. That was just a brief introduction.